Hello and welcome to the Pay Search Podcast. My name is Chris Schaefer, and today I am doing something a little different. I know most of you listen to the audio show, but I'll tell you, you might want to tune in to the link in the description to watch the YouTube video that is going to go along with this video. The link is in the description. You can follow along as I do a live Google Ads build from a requested topic that I posted a poll over on Twitter. People voted. And today I'm going to do a high funnel lead generation campaign build. So what I'm doing is I'm following the 10 step process, which is a podcast episode that I released back in, uh, I believe the end of August or July, something like that. So if you want to go back and listen, the 10 step process on how to build your Google ads campaign. And I've had a lot of good reception from that. And I thought, Hey, maybe be helpful if I built something out and showed you guys kind of how that looks a little more in depth and you can either listen in, uh, I will audibly discuss what I'm doing and you'll also be able to follow along on the screen and see how I build the campaign. So specifically this campaign is going to be what I call a high funnel campaign. So this high funnel campaign is going to be focused on an industry that I you know just kind of picked out of the blue uh, that is focused on lead generation, getting people to call in order to sign up for a service, you know, purchase a service. Uh, and this happens to be what I decided on doing was uh, a specific service for vehicles. So let's say you buy a new vehicle, you have a very nice luxury vehicle, or you put a lot of money into your vehicle either way, and you want to do a type of paint protection. This is very common. There are many, many shops around the United States that do a paint protection uh, sometimes it's it's paired with a ceramic coating type of thing, and it's designed to protect your paint and you know make your car look nice for a long time. A lot of people want to generate leads for that, and it can be very expensive to just advertise on paint protection shops near me and things like that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to demonstrate how I would build a campaign if I wanted to sample some of the traffic before they go about doing a search around paint protection shop or paint film protection for vehicles or things like that. So this is what I call a high funnel lead generation campaign. It's designed to bring people to my site before they search those core, very bottom of funnel keywords. So it's very specific and I'm ready to jump in right away. Before I do so, I want to remind you about Optio. Optio.com slash PSP. That is the URL that you can click in the description. It is the tool to help you take what I'm going to build here and take it further. So I'm going to go through some of the basics in my build. And I think that everyone needs a tool to help look over their shoulder, to help them understand what am I missing? What things haven't I asked? What haven't I considered? What numbers am I overlooking? Everyone, whether they're managing one campaign or a hundred, needs some type of companionship to help you understand the things that you might otherwise miss. So that's what this Optio software is all about. It has all kinds of tools to help you from AI ad writing to bidding algorithms to help you understand the best manual bids or automation bidding that you should be doing, all kinds of negative keyword features. It covers the gambit of Google Ads, and it is solely designed for Google Ads. Through this podcast, you can get a two-month free trial of the tool. That's twice as long as you would get if you just tried out the software directly. But if you go to optio.com slash PSP, you can try the tool for free for two months. All right. Without further ado, let's jump in. So if you're not watching on YouTube, you can just listen to the sound of my voice and I will audibly guide you through what I'm doing. So as I said, I'm going to be going through the 10 step program, which I kind of built out and uh, came up with to help people understand just the basics and make it a very friendly approach to Google ads. So starting with number one. So step number one is choosing your objective and then choosing the campaign type and naming the campaign. So 
here we go. We're going to create a new campaign right here in Google Ads. And step one, as I said, is choosing an objective. Now let's talk about this. There are a lot of objective objectives here. The reason I prefer no goal guidance objective is because I want to choose all the options that allow me to pick call ads or text ads, all the bidding strategies that would be available to me, no matter what it is I change in the account. So if you choose some strategies in here, some of these strategies will only allow you to choose certain things. And so it's thus limiting if I choose some objective that may not allow me to choose call ads. For example, if I choose local store visits, I may not be able to do call ads or certain types of settings in there. So that's why my very first thing that I do is create a campaign without a goal guidance. That's the first button I click. So I click that. Then I'm presented with campaign type. So this one should be easy. There are a lot of options out there. Everything from performance max to video to app campaigns, smart campaigns, discovery campaigns. Don't want any of those. Lead generation for me is going to be solely fo focused on search. So I choose search. Then I am presented with an option to choose my goals. Now, in this example, I'm I just have one option, which is submit lead forms. If you're building a brand new account, you uh, may not have anything built out in here already. But for this, I already have something I've chosen. But choose your goal. And it could be phone calls, lead forms. It could be a lot of different things. But there's no way I could discuss all the options. It's really going to be up to you. So from there, I hit continue. All right. Now, I actually don't choose any of the check checkbox here that says select the results that you want from this campaign. I do not choose those. I don't really care. I skip that entirely. Those are optional. And then I just enter a name for the campaign. We're going to call this one search and maybe dash high funnel. We'll do that. Okay. So search high funnel, hit continue. So this is the first big question we have. We have to choose our bidding. So that is step two of the 10 step process, choose bidding. So there are a few options and some that are not even shown. Okay. So as I discussed in my other episode where I went through this, I discussed all the different options that you have a more in-depth discussion. You can listen to that episode back from a few months ago called the 10 steps to Google ad to building a Google ads campaign. You can go look that up for my suggestion on what you should do. I think you choose out of these four that are given to you. I think clicks is the best option. That's what I'm going to choose. I advise that for various reasons. As I said, I'm not going to go into those details here, but that's, that is the one that I would choose. And I am actually not going to choose a cost, uh, a CPC, limit a bid limit on this. I do that on purpose because what I find is many people don't know what to choose here and they choose something extremely small or very, very high. And it doesn't really make a difference anyway, because they're not even going to get clicks that high, but that is something I, I try and make this as simple as possible. So basically just choose, tell Google, you want to focus on clicks just want to get clicks. That's all you want to get at this point. Let the conversions happen eventually, but we don't want to optimize for conversions yet. So easy enough so far, only a few clicks and we're all ready to choose step number three, which is our networks. So step three is networks. And I highly suggest that you uncheck both of these. All right. So I uncheck both the Google search partners and the Google display network. Now, very briefly, my thoughts on this is I consider search partners to be a, an option. You can try Google search partners, but I don't like to start with it. It might be something I test in the future, but for most clients and campaigns that I build, I do not start, start with search partners and I never start with display network. 
And in fact, I never even choose to display to use the display network in the future. It's not even something that I like or find to be valuable in any way. So that is my very strong suggestion. You do not use any of these. And when you uncheck both of these, don't assume that you're not going to get any clicks. You're defaulted to show on Google.com. You're just unselecting these other two options. All right. So next, we go down to step four, locations. This particular made-up client that I'm doing is going to be in the Phoenix area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a uh, custom location. And I'm just going to write in Phoenix. So I choose target and done. Now, there's a little option right here below that that says location options. Okay, location options allows me to tell Google, I only want people that are in my targeted location, not people who show an interest in. I think, I think that's important if you're a local business. That's what this is about. Local business, high funnel, lead generation. I think that's a good choice. It might be different if you're a little more lenient. Maybe you're a national or a high, you know, a wide regional campaign. You might be want to be a little more lenient there. But for me, this is highly focused on a specific geographic area. Now, before I move past step four, I want to pull back and I want to go to advanced search right here. That will pull up a separate window. And let's say, for example, the made-up client that we're working with is maybe up here on the north side of Phoenix. Okay, maybe on the uh, northwest side. So a cool option to use is this little toggle switch right here. I can actually hit this toggle switch and tell Google, hey, show me, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, show me the cities or neighborhoods or postal codes. I can actually tell it to filter, and then I can go in and tell it, hey, just show me to this 85382 zip code and only show me in this 85373 zip code. And you see, I don't have to go to a, you know, and, and, and go to Google and ask it to list all the zip codes and then cross-reference cross them on a map or something like that. I can actually see this right here and just point and click. Very easy. This is a great way to really narrow in and kind of create a, uh, you know, a, a, a target that you can visually see. And as you, you notice, as I scroll around the page, it shows all these different zip codes on the page. This is a great way to do it. So let's say I end up deciding to do that. And then maybe I decide, you know what? I also want to do a radius. So I tell Google, hey, do a five mile radius around. And I'm just going to give it a zip code. Five, uh, 853, I think it was 03. Okay, well. Technically, that's the wrong zip code. I didn't get that right. But that is another great way to uh, tell Google to create a, a radius. You can put it on top. Let's, let's try it a different way. I can actually click here, remove that, zoom in, and I'll show you another tip that you can use. You can hit pin mode and drop in a just five mile radius just like that. So there we go. So there's the five mile radius. I will now... Go ahead and save this. And there we go. I'm going to remove the Glendale one. I didn't want that one. So there we go. There's our postal codes or zip codes as well as a five mile radius. I know that should cover pretty much everybody who's very likely to come to my location. All right, and that's it. So let's move now to step five, which is languages. Probably the easiest step of all. If you're running an English campaign and you're in an English speaking area, I just suggest you, you start with English. Just choose English. I don't really suggest any changes here. You can probably leave it as default. All right, uh, next, what I want you to do on part five, step B, so this is still step five, I want you to grab a couple things that might fit into your industry. So if I'm doing a car, uh, uh, car performance and uh, performance campaign, you know, where, where I'm focused on uh, car enhancements, things like that. 
I might actually have some interesting segments that I can choose. So what this audience segment does is it allows me to target people who have an interest, have an affinity in vehicles. So I could say something like, type in the word car under search here, and it could find people who are in market for new luxury vehicles. I might also find people, you know, I might do the word luxury by itself, type in luxury and find a few, you know, luxury shoppers. Cause I know the people that are going to be buying this are probably going to be more wealthy because it's a rather expensive service. So I might try people who do uh, family vacationers, things like that. So I might, ch I might pick four or five or six different things that are strategically sim similar to the kind of service, the kind of people that I'm looking for. And these are only going to be observation targeted. So you're going to make sure you choose observation. Now, this is entirely optional. You do not have to do this. So if you are uncomfortable with what this means, you don't understand it, just skip this audience segment entirely. Don't even worry about it and move on to the next one. So the next is the broad match keyword setting. That option is defaulted on off for us because of the bidding strategy that I chose. But if you did choose a different bidding strategy, make sure you choose off on the broad match keyword settings because you'll see further down on my process that um, it's going to be ideal that you have the ability to change your match types. All right, so that is the end of step five. Now we get to the meat of it. We are now able to create an ad group and write keywords. So I'm going to call this paint protection because that's what we're trying to sell here. And because this is a high funnel, I'm going after not specifically paint protection services or paint protection near me or something like that, car paint protection. I'm not going after that directly. I'm trying to find that traffic a little bit higher in the funnel. So what that might look like is, and, and this is where you just make a guess, how to protect my new car paint. I literally just typed that in, how to protect my new car paint. So the person got a new vehicle, they're looking this up, and I might do a second keyword, like protect, um, let's see, uh, how about ways to protect paint on new car. Now you notice, these are rather long searches. And I'm just making these up. Did I go and research these terms ahead of time? No. This is just a hunch. And this is what makes this 10-step process so approachable for everyone. You don't have to have a massive, uh, you know, amazing keyword tool out there to just kind of figure this out by, by doing your keyword research and stuff like that. You can just make a guess and the topic of the ad group, which I'm going to go back and rename the ad group here, it's going to be how to protect. I'm going to name that the topic of the ad group, how to protect, because the focus now, now I'm kind of thinking about it. What's, what's the purpose? What kind of traffic am I bringing to this ad group? Well, you have to make that decision and then you pick your keywords. So the keywords that I've chosen are people that are not aware that there are paint protection services for vehicles out there. They're just trying to find out ways. They're still looking that information up. They don't know that the service is available. So I want to nab these people out of the research phase and pull them down in my, into my low funnel phase. I want to inform them about the service, make them aware of the service that I'm offering. So that is what I'm doing there. So that is really all I'm going to do. I'm just going to choose a few keywords. You notice I wrote two of them. That's it. Now, another quick tip here is don't do something like car paint. That's a horrible keyword. There is no context to that keyword. I would never want to run a keyword like that in a high funnel because it's just going to get so much unqualified traffic. I want to give Google something that is highly contextual, something that's highly understandable from the Google's uh, keyword bot system. I need to be able to 
define context for it to understand what this keyword is, because that's the way that keywords work. Now you put in a keyword, Google, Google's algorithm reads that keyword and then matches you to searches that match Google's idea of that keyword. It's never, Google does not get you word for word matching anymore. You don't type in a specific four word phrase in Google and then just only get clicks on that four word phrase. You have to tell Google, this is the kind of traffic I want. Then they match that as best they can. That's the new world we live in. You no longer live in a world of word to word matching. So that's why it's very important not to pick bad, non-specific, broad, ugly keywords here. Be very specific about the kind of traffic you want. And the great thing is that's just a test. I mean, you just put something in here. We'll find out the next few steps will step us through here. Now, what I want to do from here is I want to punch in a URL that takes the searcher to the product that, uh, the service that I'm offering. Then I'm going to write a couple of headlines and I've, I've pre-written these ahead of time. So I'm going to do one headline, maximum paint protection. And then I'm going to put another headline, scratch resistance. Then I'm going to put another call to action on the third headline, book an appointment. And then maybe one fourth one, new car paint protection. All right. So this is just a scratch start to your ad writing. I am not going to go in depth on ad writing in this session. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to talk about just getting through this process. Just write something, write a few headlines. You definitely need to get your ad strength as high as you can. Try and write a, the best ad that you can, but this is not the time to do that. Don't get overwhelmed with your ad copywriting because uh, this is only step seven. We've got a few more to go through. So I've also pre-written a couple descriptions. So I'm going to paste those in. Description number one is get the highest grade paint protection for your new vehicle. And then description number two, now booking for paint protection application appointments in Phoenix. There we go. So I've now written the ad. I'm going to skip all of the site links and call outs. Again, this is about fast and furious, build it and get done with it and move on. You know, let the campaign start running, work on this, come back to it, improve it over time. I often find that people if they try and do everything at once, they're often overwhelmed. It's just too much to worry about all at once. So I try and make it very approachable. That's why I have the 10 step here. So that's it. Write an ad and then hit next. Now, if you're building a brand new campaign, this is where you would put a budget. I am going to put one cent. The reason I put one cent on my budget is because I can leave it running and it won't get any clicks. It'll never run and I can just leave it and walk away and I, I don't have to pause it or, you know, if I forget to pause it or something like that, when I'm ready for it to run, I'll give it a budget. But I usually start my campaigns with just one cent. All right. So now we are done. This is the confirmation page and Google's going to warn you about, hey, did, you didn't do this. You didn't do this. You need to improve this. Again, don't get bogged down on the details at this point. You've got plenty of time for you to improve it, but at least get it out there and running. 10 steps and done. And we could we could call this the 15-minute the Google Ads campaign. I mean, it's very fast, very efficient. Let's go ahead and publish it. I hit publish campaign. And we now have a campaign that technically is ready to go. It doesn't have a budget assigned to it yet, but it is ready to go but we're not done. All right. Now what we need to do is step nine. And this is, this is the creative part that I, I just don't hear other people talk about. Step nine is add more keywords. This, believe it or not, is where you do a little bit of your keyword research after you have actually picked some of your keywords after you've already written some of your keywords. So I'm going to click on the ad group that we created called how to protect because I know this is all about paint protection. So I just called it how to protect. So that kind of triggers in my head. This is a high funnel. How to is very much a high funnel kind of search. I click how to protect and you'll notice 
here, if you're watching the video, giant red letters show up. Low search volume. Low search volume. Google saying, hey, great keyword. Great keyword. But uh, no one searches this. There is no search volume on this keyword. So you might think, oh, I'm at a dead end here. Well, that's fine. One thing that you can do, if you do have this problem, you can ignore it and move forward with the next step. But you could also, just to try and get some volume out of this, change a little bit of the keyword. So the keyword is how to protect my new car paint. I could just delete the word my. I hit enter and look at that, just like magic. I took one little part of the keyword out that was just kind of a, an add-on and suddenly now it's pending and under review. Google says, oh, okay, we can't get traffic for that. There is search volume for that. The other keyword is also low search volume. So I just go in and I'm just going to say, instead of ways to protect paint on new car, I'm just going to re remove on new. So now it says ways to protect paint car. Hit enter. There we go. So just by shortening it from uh, seven words to five words, now Google says, okay, 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 we understand the keyword now. There is some volume on this. We can get you some traffic. Great. Excellent. I'm on, I'm on track. And here's the fun part. Here's where you take the topic of the ad group that you've created. Again, very important. Make sure you do not divert from the topic of the ad group that you're creating. So the topic is high funnel. It's very important. And I'm going to keep that in mind and I'm going to click keywords. Now, this is a wonderful tool. And this tool will continue to build out new ideas and show you topics that you had never thought of. This little tool will when you hit the when you hit the plus button, the blue plus button in your ad group to create new keywords, it will give you keywords grouped by relevance. Now, back in the old days, it used to have topical build outs based on the theme. That was a wonderful, glorious time in Google ads back in the old UI interface. Those days are gone. Um, now we have just a giant list, which is not nearly as valuable, but at least this is nice. And the first suggestions that it gives is how to keep car paint looking new. What a great high funnel search. That person did not say, what What did they say? They did not say paint protection coating or paint coating protection or something like that. They didn't use any of those terms. They didn't use PPF, which is another uh, term that people often use for this. That's a great search. I'm going to add that. I click and I add it. Here's another one. How to keep my car paint looking new. Great. How to treat new car paint. Okay. That one seems a little risky because it might seem like the person's looking for what, what, what wax to use. Like it's kind of a DIY search, but I'm okay with it. I, I still think that that person may not be aware and they might be willing because they have a new car. They might be willing to invest some money in their new car and keep the paint looking nice. So I'm going to add those three and I hit save. That's really Technically, all I need to at least get started. I have some keywords here, but there's a little bit more. If you want to go a little bit further, I'll show you, but technically we are done. That is the 10-step process to building a campaign. And just to say them again, it is choose your objective, choose your bids, choose your networks, choose your locations, your languages, Choose the keywords, write the ad, and then add more keywords, set your budget, and then step 10 is wait. Now, I want to briefly go over step 10. Step 10 is basically you are off the hook for at least 24 hours. Don't go in here and just do a bunch of work. Don't check the stats from today. Don't look at just today's metrics. Go in and, and find all the metrics after go look at the metrics tomorrow look at today's metrics tomorrow okay and then go about your normal optimization process which i talk about all the time in the podcast so step 10 is wait don't 
agonize over whether you're getting clicks today, give it time. Let the system run. It might take 48 hours, but wait. It's going to take time. This is a process that you go through. Okay, so let's go through a few more things. Let's say that you want to try a different aspect to try and bring, bring people to um, your website. So I'm going to talk about another high funnel approach that I might try with this specific, uh, this specific uh, client. Before I do, I want to remind you about Optio at optio.com slash PSP. Great tool. Highly suggest it. They have AI. They have algorithms. They have an amazing dashboard template reporting system. They, they have a reporting system that spits out reports if you have clients. If you have a nagging boss that you constantly need to give reports to, that is the tool to use. It does everything that you need for Google Ads in one clean focus tool. You can get a two-month free trial at optio.com slash PSP. All right, so you've come up with one ad group. Let's say you realize, you know, what, t what, what, what people tend to do is really want this service with a high dollar vehicle. So what I might do is I might create a new ad group called Tesla. Okay, so the keywords might be Tesla. Oh, Tesla, just realized I misspelled that. Tesla paint, um, let's see, uh, new, new Tesla paint protection. Uh, let's not use protection. That's too close to the, to the thing. So we might do something like new Tesla paint, um, maintenance. Okay. Something like that. All right. So new Tesla paint maintenance might be a search that someone might do. And again, I'm, you see, I'm making a guess here. I don't really know what the keyword would be. I'm purposefully trying to do this off the cuff to show you how I might kind of think of something. But the whole idea, again, keep to the theme of the ad group. The theme of the ad group here is Tesla owners that are new car owners that want to maintain the, the, the paint, the condition of their new vehicle, you know, luxury vehicle, something like that. So I hit save and continue. And of course, it's going to pop up a new ad. I'm fine with the ad that I've already kind of pre-written. So I'm just going to skip that step and say done, save and continue. So now I've created another ad group and I'm just going to do the same thing. I go into that ad group and lo and behold, here we are again, low search volume. It says, oh, nobody searches for this. I'm going to hit plus on the keyword and Google doesn't give us anything. All right, so this is where you can just try and work some magic here and try and you know find some ideas so uh protect tesla paint so i might put that in hit save and something i always like to do i you know i do a, a reload on the page and the idea here is keep feeding google keywords keep feeding them you know single keywords until you find something that triggers this blue plus button to show you some ideas. And there it is right there. Now, again, stick to the theme of what you're looking for. You don't want paint protection, but you want to find things that are the how to kind of stuff, because this is high funnel. So you notice every one of these are very much low funnel. They're using brand names. They're using the paint protection film term. That's not what we want. We want people that are looking for the how to. So that's not it yet. Let's try it. Let's try how to uh, protect uh, Tesla paint. There we go. That's a good one. So I hit save. I'm going to hit reload one more time. And once that pops up, I hit the plus button. And now, event, you know, just keep grinding through this to try and find some kind of way for Google to uh, start giving you some high funnel terms. If you can't find any, you're fine to go ahead and run just a couple of these broader keywords. All right, you can run these broader keywords, just test them. All right, this is how to get off the ground and running very quickly. Now, 
this is not, honestly, this is not the way I build campaigns. It's a little more in depth, but this is the basic idea that is the most user friendly, easiest way. And the reason I suggest this is because everybody else is out there spending 30 minutes, three hours, four hours building these elaborate campaigns. And your campaign starts on day one. Your campaign starts on hour one. You can get out there and try something. You can always limit the budget, take it slow. But the best research out there is research that comes straight from your ads. And you can look at the search terms. You can look at the results, the, the click-through rate, see what the cost per click is. Just get out there and start running some ads and use that data that you're paying for to make decisions about the kind of negative keywords you need, ideas that you'd never thought of. So, oh, I didn't think about the fact that you know, people would search this brand or this brand or something like that. And you have different ad groups based on the data that you're learning because you already started. The whole idea here is that you don't build campaigns from perfection and then turn them on. You build campaigns from a groundwork and then learn as that groundwork starts to frame up and you start to understand, oh, okay, okay, I get it. Uh, actually, I, this is a whole a whole funnel that I hadn't even thought of. Or, oh, I, I, I've discovered this whole strategy that, that I see in my search terms that I'd never thought of. You start with the, uh, with, with the groundwork and then move your way up. It's going to be a much better approach. Now, we've gone through all this. You know how to build a couple ad groups. Let me show you one step that can reduce the risk on the keywords that you are running. Okay, I have not mentioned match type. And that's because I, I do not want to be overwhelming here. You know, I'm, I'm going to try and keep this as simple and straightforward as possible. I do not want to be overwhelming. But what you want to do is limit the amount of risk that you're going to expose yourself to. You don't want to waste money. And some of these keywords absolutely could waste money. One easy way, once you've chosen these keywords, one easy way to run this kind of campaign and have a have less risk of wasting money is to change from broad match to phrase match, just like that. And if you are concerned about the quality of traffic that you would get, do that on all of the keywords. That's by doing that, you're, you're reducing how much volume, how much leniency, how much close match variant Google is going to allow on these terms. I don't think that you should ever start with exact match. That's a more advanced topic. Not something I'm going to get into here. But I think phrase match with keywords that are three and four words long, I think those are great places to start. So that is the quick and dirty 10-step live Google Ads build to show you. And, and really, I would, if I was building a high funnel campaign like this, this is what I would do. I'm going to go after the how-to people. I'm going to go after people that are not using my core terms. And, and just one more little tip. I haven't even mentioned negative keywords. I might actually go into my negative keywords if I'm doing a high funnel lead gen campaign and actually block paint protection film, right? I might even block PPF. I might even block ceramic or something like that. I might block these terms because I do not want these low funnel people coming in on these terms. I want to capture the people that are above the knowledge level of PPF, of paint protection film and ceramic coating and, and, and that kind of stuff. I want to find them before at a cheaper cost per click. That's what I'm going for. The how to, how does, what does, when does, those kind of informational research clicks are cheaper, higher funnel, and there are plenty of them out there. Whereas the paint protection film stuff, the low funnel traffic will be much more expensive, much more competition, and you can adjust your bids appropriately and, 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 and 
things like that. So that is a very, a very simple 10 step process to build your campaign and get started in less than an hour. Now, granted, you probably might take a little bit longer to write ad copy. Ad copy is usually a bit of a grind. Make sure you do write some decent ad copy. Look up some tips. I have some podcasts uh, where I, I go through uh, ad copy writing and things like that, but it is probably the, the, I consider it the most difficult part. Picking the keywords should not be the most difficult part. If you end up with an ad group that has five keywords in it, that is fine. Go for it. The point is start the process. The point is don't get bogged down in the research. Don't get bogged down in creating the perfect campaign. Focus on building a working campaign, a campaign that can have a beginning for you. Don't overthink it and you will not have to stress about it. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening, watching. I hope this was useful to you out there. I wanted to make the most practical example that I possibly could. I will be back next week with a normal podcast with my normal process, but I thought this was a nice change of pace. Thank you so much. Catch you next week.